Then, of course, we have Robert Smithson, and he's really sort of the person you think of when you think of Earth art. Now, although he dies very young at the age of 35, his short career has inspired more young artists than most among a generation that emerged in the 1960s. He is a formidable writer and critic as well as an artist, his interests ranging from Catholicism to mineralogy to science fiction. And his earliest paintings were actually uh, paintings and collages, and then soon he comes to focus on sculpture. Responding to the minimalism and conceptualism of the early 1960s, he starts to expand his work out of the galleries, out of these salt-based pieces, or often salt-based pieces, and into the landscape. In 1970, he will produce the earthwork or land out for which he is best known, which is, of course, Spiral Jetty, a remarkable coil of rock composed in the colored waters of the shores of the Great Salt Lake in Utah. So let's talk about the Spiral Jetty. He places this specifically in the northern section of the Great Salt Lake. And this is an area that is cut off from fresh water supplies. When a nearby causeway was constructed by the Southern Pacific Railroad in 1959, what this means is there's increased salinity, which increases brine shrimp, and we end up with this very odd, almost science fiction-y red water. And this is important because at the base of it, one of the things he's doing is calling this area damaged. And this is a period of time, 1970, where things are happening, like the Cuyahoga River bursting into flames. Yes, you heard that right, a river will burst into flames three times. So he's using it as an environmental element, calling our attention to damage that we've done to the environment as humans. By putting this causeway across the Great Salt Lake, you end up with some areas that are fresher water with fish and living things, and some areas that are not, that are far too salty because we've cut them off. So... This encourages the water's unique red-violet coloration because, of course, we have a concentration of salt-tolerant bacteria and algae, amongst other things. Now, he particularly likes the combination of colors because, to him, it evoked a ruined and polluted sci-fi landscape. This is a period of time where pollution is not a company and a couple of barrels. This is the time of the Love Canal. This is the time where... Uh, Lake Michigan, for example, you know you're near Lake Michigan because you can smell the dead fish, the dead alewives, and other things in 1970. So he's trying to focus on this polluted landscape. You can't look at this and not think of it as potentially a polluted landscape. And he's using entirely natural materials native to the area, uh, calling attention again to that idea of blight. And I should point out, this is in ephemeral art. It comes and goes. The Great Salt Lake changes level, uh, just like so many other lakes. And so this piece has appeared and disappeared numerous times. In fact, it's never really clear whether it will appear again or maybe something has happened that would damage the spiral jetty. And yet no one's out there trying to save it, uh, or at least no one should be because Smithson didn't intend for it to be saved. Nevertheless, he also sought to reference things in the piece. For example, uh, he wants to reference the importance of time in eroding and transforming our environment. He wants to show us and make us really think about that environment. You can't look at the spiral jetty at images like this and not go, wow, there's either something mystically beautiful or terrifyingly wrong with this place. I mean, just look at it. It looks really odd. The water's red, or we have salt, or we have any number of other things. It should start a conversation at some level. Now, the coiled structure, why does he choose that? Well, he's choosing it. He's inspired by the growth pattern of crystals. And yet, it also resembles a primeval sort of symbol. We see in so many cultures this idea of a spiral as a symbol. 
This makes the landscape seem ancient, even though it's so new. Of course, we're in the new world, so we don't have things, uh, man-made things very often. They're going to be thousands of years old. And yet he's creating something that you could look at and, and think of that way. It's also making the... Sorry, even while it also looks futuristic, obviously with the red water and the spiral, there's a sense of futurism. So it kind of calls into question the idea of constant forward movement in time. It's calling into question what is our time and how is it best represented? So a lot of different ideas going on here. 